Sup fellas, how's it going? Danny here and today is a good day because we are making a kill bot out of scrap metal and something else. I always wanted to try make one that crushes pumpkins, watermelons and ankles too. Alright, as for mechanical part, we decided to buy some bearing units, these scooter wheels and pulleys to bring our demon to life. As for electronics, it's quite nice to use brushless motors cause they are way more powerful compared to brushed ones. To make it spin, you will need a controller and 22 volts slash 18 amp hours battery. At least that's what we managed to get. Also, as said earlier, 12 volt brushed AC motor. You can get one from the electric screwdriver, 12 volts battery, a uh, servo motor to steer the front wheel and a remote, you know, like a TV remote, but a killbot remote. For starters, let's connect it all together on the workbench to see if it works. It works, by the looks of it. Of course, it all will be debugged and set right later. Let's see what we need to do next. Welding. I watched some videos about killbot making on YouTube and picked two types of bots I personally like the best. The one with a rotating shaft on the front part and the other one that flips the rival bots upside down like pancakes. Mechanisms to make the flipper are quite expensive so we will make ankle snapper bot, yeah. Yeah, it should be easy, an easy fix. Again, I'm just trying myself in bot making and won't claim it to be able to compete with other bots from various shows. Just having fun here. To make a unit that will survive at least 5 minutes out there in battle, I'll need way more time. So here's how the frame will look like. Oh, like a little cute coffin with a spinning blade at the front. We decided to equip it with big enough wheels so it could continue ripping watermelons apart even if got flipped upside down. Once we finished though we realized it won't hold even 30 seconds in a real battle. It will just be fucking destroyed right away. Let's mark the place for mounting the shaft and cut out a piece of metal to fit the pulley. Then we weld the platform for the shaft punch a hole, drill and cut the thread for the bolts. Now you can screw the shaft and wheels into place. On the shaft we'll mark the place of attachment of the pulley and select a part of the metal in order to insert the locking screw into it. Now we need to thread the nuts, which will clamp the wheels so we could assemble everything. The wheels are kept together through bushings and washers we made ourselves from scratch. The only thing is that the pulley does not fit the shaft, so you should use a special 20mm finger. Next we remove the inner chamfer with a deburring tool. And then we will connect the pulley with the shaft together and once it's down, the wheel starts to rest against the platform. Engineering! The platform turned out to be very solid, it even can withstand my weight. So we put on the belt and mount the motor. Oh, how we were landing the pulley on the motor shaft. That was quite a song full of foul words, but let's give it a quick try. Without any extra weight, it's all good, but... With all the load it didn't budge much, motor power was totally not enough. That's where my old electric solar bot screwdriver came in. They have brushless motors inside and that's a top notch for this project. After all the tool is made to be accidentally dropped every now and then but keeps working. Good stuff. Also, in our case, this chuck was very handy since it's quite simple to install a pulley in it. 
Let's uh, put a mounting plywood in the bot's body. It's easier to screw things into it. And the screwdriver body also came in handy. The gearbox and motor in it sit as tight as Ren the Cripple in his funny little wheelchair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, it's long overdue now. Now we can see that the bot can finally move back and forth. That's a success. It is time to weld the beak in which another shaft for the spinning knife will be fixed. As luck would have it, our welding machine began to die. Like clockwork exactly after a year of use. But this is a completely different story. Those bearing pockets we decided to weld straight to the frame. Pulley will be made out of an aluminium blank. Should buy these uranium ones sometime. It's really sucky to work with aluminium blanks. We will put this pulley on a brushless motor and it will rotate the knife through the V belt until it burns to hell. Let's connect the second battery and check how it works with the Fomax. Planting something more brutal gave me anxiety at that time. It spins so fast the axe just tore. It looks really dangerous man, but that's, that's what we need. A little bit of this and that, and the third wheel is on its place and this mechanical demon is alive. Time to think design aspect. I know it's not recommended to cover bots with aluminium, since during the collision it will shoot sparks all over the place. To make armor we use some steel sheets we've got left from post-apocalypse car video. That should do, some minimal defense, good stuff, should work. We also decided to make a door of some sorts on the top, with a handle, nice! Looks like a little coffin with wheels now. Knock knock, who's there? Your chances to win a bot battle! When it comes to making a blade, it's quite simple. Firstly, cover the sheet with plywood, then do a special dance, and lastly, hit it with a mullet, and it's done! We actually made two blades, a big one and this smaller one, because it's freaking scary! Let's apply the blade here, put the belt and weld the face plates, because we don't want the whole thing to crack in the process. All the electronics we'll put inside the office file, since we want to have some good fun. And the icing on the cake, the name. Coffin the Crusher sounds fitting all right.
Well, this is a mess. Quite a handy thing we made, to be honest. Of course, it needs to be improved, and it won't stand a chance against the real bots. But I liked it, quite an experience. If you liked the video, hit this like button down there and subscribe, because we make a lot of useless but fun junk. It was um, Danya Krastyar, they call me in Russia. See you guys.